I want to share with you for a moment out of the book of Luke, reading from chapter 1. I'm going to be reading from the beginning of verse 26. In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and he said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. <coughs> Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of a greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid. Mary, you have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son. You are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who was said to be barren is in her sixth month. For nothing is impossible with God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. And then the angel left her. This is God's word for God's people. Thanks. Thanks be to God. We can look at this scripture in many different ways. We can look at what it tells us about Jesus. What it tells us about Jesus being called the Son of God, being called the Holy One. About Jesus and David's throne. All of this becomes available. He's both human and divine. It tells us about that. But I want us to look at this maybe as a lesson in discipleship. Mary could have very easily have been almost his first disciple. But I want us to look at it in a way of discipleship. I want us to go deep into Mary's soul, into Mary's heart, and see what these scriptures are talking about. What motivates her response to God? What motivates your response to God for something that God asked you to do? This passage tells us four things about Mary. The facts of Mary's life, the fear in Mary's heart, the wonder in Mary's mind, and the submission in Mary's spirit. Let's look at the first one. The facts of Mary's life. An angel came to her and was telling her she is going to give birth to a child. This was a young woman, a, a, probably a teenager, she was a young woman in the little town of Nazareth. It tells us that her husband, her future husband, was going to be Joseph. They were not married. They were kind of what you and I would call engaged at the time. But it tells us that Mary was just in a simple place, being just an individual, and was being called out by God to serve a greater purpose. Look at the fear in Mary's heart. She was afraid when that angel came to her. Did you see what the angel said? Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Whenever we meet something new or something strange, things begin to happen and begin to stir us because we're out of the norm. We're moving into something in a whole new way. It becomes strange to us. We become confused. And that's just the way Mary was. Mary was talking to an angel. And she really wasn't sure all that was going on. The little alarms begin to go off in Mary's head and in your head. Something's different. Something is not just, just not right. We use this alarm system just like Mary did sometimes and we begin to have fear. We begin to be afraid when we get out of the norm. 
Can you imagine an angel like Gabriel coming and talking to you and telling you, don't be afraid? I would probably still be standing there in shock trying to figure out what is going on in my life. And that's basically what Mary was doing. There's sometimes there's a danger and a, a sinful time if we let that fear override our life. If we let that fear begin to control our life. Sometimes we're afraid of death. Sometimes we're afraid of our spouse leaving. Sometimes we're afraid he's not going to leave. Sometimes we're afraid of sickness. And sometimes we're just afraid I can't pay my bills. When that kind of fear overtakes our life, when that kind of fear of death or spouse or, or sickness or what are you going to do for the day, when that kind of fear begins to control your mind and begins to control your life, things are getting out of whack. When we live in fear of anything, things begin to happen and take place. We respond to situations out of fear rather than out of faith. We must resist that time of fear. We must resist the time of being afraid and look at it in faith as now what God's going to do, what's going to take place. When we look at this passage, if you look, Mary accepted that. Don't be afraid. Mary accepted that and continued talking to him. Continued talking to Gabriel to find out now what was going to take place. Let's look at the wonder in Mary's mind. Gabriel explains, Mary, you're going to be with child. This child is going to be the Son of God. This child, you're going to call Him Jesus. He's going to be the Lord Most High. Mary looked at that and wondered, how is this going to happen? She said she was a virgin. How is this going to take place unless something changes, unless something steps in? Mary stood back and began to wonder, what have I got to do? How am I going to fix this? Was that Mary's thoughts? No. Mary didn't wonder that. Mary was wondering now, what's God going to do? We get to a point in our life and sometimes we're standing there in wonder and our mind is just running and we don't know what to do. And sometimes we just have to allow God to do this. We just have to allow God to fix this. Mary, you're going to bear a child named Jesus. She questioned him. How's it going to be? How's it going to happen? Did she question him in unbelief? No. She just questioned, now what's next? What's next? what takes place. We hear all the time we should never question God. We should just accept it. Did you see the words Mary said? How will this be? How is this going to happen? Sometimes it's not wrong to question God. Sometimes it's alright to question Him to see what's going on, what's taking place. See, how, how's this going to affect me? What's going to take place? Sometimes it opens up our mind and we get... Uh, wisdom begins to come in. Knowledge begins to flow that maybe we haven't even seen or even thought about. Mary said, how is this going to be? Not out of doubt. But Mary said, out of faith. Gabriel, how is this going to take place? What would our response be to something like that? How is this going to be? Let's look at the submission in Mary's spirit. Every time I read this, every time I read her response, I just I stand amazed. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me 
as you have said. Mary stood in awe of what was about to take place. Mary stood in awe realizing that something God was fixing to do something in her life. And she stood there in awe. Now here is a teenager that's about to be misunderstood. She's about to be rejected possibly, possibly from her family. She was about to be rejected from this man called Joseph who she was probably, as we say, engaged to. She was about to be rejected, the possibility of being rejected, in the community. But yet she turns right around and she says, if that's what God wants, in so many words. She agrees. Mary affirms the truth of discipleship. It's about us being the servant, not the master. Mary was the servant. You see, sometimes in our life, we get things brought upon us, and we begin to wonder, we begin to question, how is this going to happen? Do I want to do this? Do I want my community to wonder about me? Am I going to be rejected by my friends for what I'm saying or what I'm doing? Sometimes we have to decide in our life, am I the master or am I the servant? It's about what takes place in our life. If God is calling you or me to do something and we disagree with it, we have just become the master of our life. We're no longer the servant. We're the master. Here was Mary, this young girl, probably scared to death, and she said, I am the Lord's servant. May it be to me as you have said. You see, sometimes we have to struggle, maybe for days, deciding, am I the master or am I the servant? Am I the disciple? Will I follow God? Will I do what He wants me to do? Or will I reject? Will I step away? Mary gave birth to the Son of God. She was willing to step out and say, may it be to me whatever you said. She was willing to be used. Every time God calls upon us, every time God comes to us, sends an angel to us with a suggestion, with a thought, with some way that we can help, something that we can do, and every time God comes to us, we have to go through our mind. Am I going to do it? Or am I going to turn away from it? God may not come to you and tell you He's going to cause you to give birth to the Son of God. God may not come to you and tell you He's fixing to do something tremendous in your life. But God may just simply come to you and just ask something of you that maybe you think you're not capable of doing. He's going to ask you to step out of your comfort zone of where you feel comfortable and do something. And when He asks you that, you're either the master or you're the servant. It's about accepting what God wants us to do. I love these words. I am the Lord's servant. May it be to me as you have said. Mary just gave in. Mary said, I want to serve. I want to do. I want to be what you are for me. Sometimes each one of us has a reason, has a purpose has something for the reason that we're here in this community, in this family, in this area. We have a reason. And sometimes God gives us that purpose and we know exactly what it is. We know what God wants from us. And sometimes our life is turned upside down trying to decide, am 
Am I going to do it? Or am I going to turn my back? Do I want God to lead? Do I want God to be my king? Or do I want to be king? It's about allowing God to be the master. And you and I are the hired hands. It's about God owning the business. And we're just part of the workforce. That's what it amounts to. We just do what the boss says. And David, if we don't do what the boss says, what happens? No supper. No supper. I was thinking of the other boss. He may be no supper. But in the workforce, those of you that are still working, if you're trying to be the boss and you're just the laborer, you're out of here. It's not going to work. You won't be there long. We have to decide, who am I? Who do I serve? Do I serve self or do I serve God? Do I want what's best for Jim or do I want what's best for God? Do I want to bring glory to me or do I want to bring glory to God? You see, we're in turmoil over that lots of times. Who of us would not like to be thought of well? Who of us would not like to have our name up in the light sometime? Sometimes it doesn't go too easy, does it? Sometimes it will fall down on you. It's about being a servant. That's who we are. That's who we're called to be. I am the Lord's servant. May it be to me as you have said. That should be our answer. In any situation, I am the Lord's servant. Do you know God that way? Do you know God as your master? Do you know God as your creator, as your redeemer? Do you know God as your sacrifice? as your lamb. The one who died on the cross for you and I. This God who came to life, who came to fle in flesh in a little lowly manger in Bethlehem. He didn't come in a palace. He didn't come with servants around Him. He came in a bed of straw. And no one was there. Just Mary and Joseph. This God who came that way loved the world so much that He gave everything that He had so that you and I could know the love that He has for us. Do you know Him? Better yet, even the devil knows God. Better than ask, do you know Him? <coughs> Will you serve Him? Will you bow down to Him and acknowledge Him as King of kings and Lord of lords? You see, I've just put you in turmoil again. There's that decision. Do I do what God wants? Or what about my neighbor? What are my neighbors going to think? What's the community going to think? Are we the master? Are we the servant? We're going to stand and sing hymn number, hymn number 572. If you have never known Jesus in that way as being the Lord, make sure you come and acknowledge Him as being the Lord in your life. The lamb that went to slaughter. The sacrifice.